sometimes you feel like you've been buried because of all those negative things that are feeling like they're piling on you. Mm -hmm. Um, And this is where you really want to establish those things are not you um, and to take some moments to separate those things from you and what you truly believe about yourself. Welcome to the Be It Till You See It podcast, where we talk about taking messy action, knowing that perfect is boring. I'm Leslie Logan, Pilates instructor and fitness business coach. I've trained thousands of people around the world, and the number one thing I see stopping people from achieving anything is self-doubt. My friends, action brings clarity, and it's the antidote to fear. Each week, my guests will bring bold, executable, intrinsic, and targeted steps that you can use to put yourself first and be it till you see it. It's a practice, not a perfect. Let's get started. Hey, be it babe. Thank you so much for being back with us today. I'm excited for you to hear about our guest today. So if you've been a long time listener, then you know that our companies um, each donate to a different charity. And um, so Profit Plies donates to the Cupcake Girls, which is um, an organization that is to support sex workers' rights and in human trafficking. Um, and OPC now um, this year is supporting the Bloom Foundation, which is an anti-bullying um, and foundation. And actually what they do is do a lot of work to support um, children and teenagers who are experiencing bullying. And guess what? Even if you're an adult, which you probably are listening to this, you will actually learn a lot because I, I think that we forget that we probably all experience some sort of bullying in our lifetime and what's going on today because bullying can happen all 24 seven, anywhere someone goes and can be done so anonymously um, that uh, we may not feel equipped and may not know what to do. And um, so I really am excited to partner up as a, as a donator to the Bloom Foundation because you know, you can't have all the goals in the world, but if somebody is telling you that you're worthless or worse, you shouldn't be here. It doesn't really matter how many tips I give you. <laughs> it doesn't. It just like it doesn't matter. And I am on a mission. I really do want, well, my mission is more bodies doing Pilates because I know it makes you a better person. But like you can't even think about doing Pilates if you are just hearing these voices in your head telling you crap. And so Andy Long, our guest today, is the founder of Bloom, and she created this because she is a victim of bullying um, multiple times over many years in different schools, um, all online. And she has created workbooks and and um, workshops to support uh, children and teenagers today. And her foundation does that for so many. And um, for my journalists who are listening, she's got a journal for you. Um, so we're going to talk about um, bullying. And really, we spend more of our time on how to, what to do if you've been bullied which I think is really important um, that you can, you can, you can give to yourself or you can give to a teenager or a kiddo in your life. Um, I really do hope that this is an episode you're able to share and check out the Bloom Foundation um, and support them however you can, maybe by sharing uh, what they're doing or by buying a box for someone, you know, who's been bullied. Um, Truly um, anti-bullying comes when we as leaders step up and oftentimes those people who would be the most amazing leaders, they're quiet because somebody told them that they weren't, they weren't worthy. And that hurts my soul on so many levels. And so we've got some great beat action items for you. We've got some great things that you can do to love yourself, to find yourself worth and to grow from what you've gone through. Thank you. And here's Andy Long. All right, be it babes. I'm excited because our guest today is somebody that I, um, I, actually reached out to a client of mine to find out well, who she knew about a certain topic. And um, and then not only did she provide me with somebody who I could talk to on this topic, she provided me with the person who helped her go through um, a really challenging time. So our guest today is Andy Long and our topic is bullying and anti-bullying and how we can prevent it and all of these things. And it's all, um, and Andy's doing the truly the Lord's work. <laughs> <laughs> comes to this topic. So Andy, will you tell everyone who you are and what you're rocking at? Yes. Thank you for that introduction. And I'm so glad she connected us. It's just been so amazing to be part of your community and be here. So I'm Andy and I experienced some cyberbullying when it just started because 
as I mentioned, it was dial-up internet at the time. So back in 2001, I believe, um, and when I was 11. So um, navigating that, I realized that there's this need for resources that go beyond anti-bullying. Um, there's a need for a safe and supportive space where if you are experiencing bullying, you can know you're not alone. Um, and you can know that there are people who care about you and want to see you bloom um, and grow through what you go through. So that's where the heart of Bloom Foundation came from. And um, we started this in 2017. And since then have just been really here to encourage and empower young women to grow through what they go through and be leaders as well, grow into leaders mm -hmm. who can influence change. And, you know, it's really fun to kind of help this next generation um, and see them just really be leaders in their space. It's been amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. So Y'all, if, if her name sounds familiar, if you're an OPC member, then you saw our community chat. We had Andy come in and really talk about like her story and like what can happen when bullying happens. And, you know, um, Andy and I are probably similar ages. And I think many of our listeners are, we know what dial it, uh, internet is. And like, it's easy for us to think like, oh my gosh, bullying was hard back when we were kids, but it was like, they didn't have access to us when we left school. Mm -hmm. However, in your case, not, not so much, even with dial up internet, there was these websites that were just built and you didn't go through it one time, but like multiple times over the course of many years of people just really saying awful things to you on the internet and anonymously, which makes it even more like makes you, makes you paranoid. Um, mm -hmm. So you, you, you went through this tragic time and that's turned into what you created. I guess like, in all of these years of you going through your healing and then these stories you see, like how does bullying really affect not just the person, but maybe the people around them as well? Yes. Yeah. I think you're so right. Bullying nowadays, the effect is different than before. Um, and so the effect now we're seeing because it's so accessible and it can be accessed 24 seven, um, definitely an increase in anxiety um, and depression. And then, of course, those who are around the person who is being bullied um, can also have that sense of hopelessness, not sure what to do, um, and just the sense of why, right? Like, why me? And it can lead to, like, victimization, which is hard as well. But I do think that there can be an opportunity or a shift to being a little bit more, this is happening to me, but... I can grow from it and it doesn't have to define me. Um, but yes, where the effects of bullying and cyberbullying, especially because it can feel so pervasive, are really tragic. They can lead to suicides and school shootings, um, eating disorders, just really heavy, terrible things. Um, so it can yeah. be, it's very like severe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's and unfortunately, it's not like it's like one person who was bullied one day did something terrible. It's like happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's happening more often, more frequently. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, and, and it is that pervasiveness of like, it's not just them at school, it's happening to them in their own phones and mm -hmm. they have to use their phones to call them. Like they have to use their phones to connect with their friends. So it's not like they can just like avoid that person. And, um, and also like, because of social media, like you can block one bully, but that doesn't mean that they don't make a new profile or start again. Like it's really, can be really difficult. Um, what are some things that you can, if you are someone who's been bullied or mm -hmm. going through some bullying that you can do to support yourself? Or if you know someone who is that you could help support them? Yes. Yeah. That's where a journal comes really in handy. Um, so all of our lessons are compiled in here and it really takes you through this path, kind of a progression and um, journey, um, where you kind of address where you're at today. Um, and then there's tools and prompts here to help you move forward to with more confidence in yourself. Um, so I'd be happy to share a little bit yeah. more about that, but yeah, yeah, let's do it. So you guys, um, if you're not watching on YouTube, um, Andy's holding up a beautiful journal, um, <laughs> how to bloom. And it is something that the bloom foundation has created. And I, I, I love this because it, you, you are correct. You do take people on a journey. And I think that's what healing is anyways. It can't just be done in one session, yeah. one hour. So yeah, let's go through that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like building that muscle, right. And getting stronger, um, as you do. Yeah. With other things. So, um, we start out with my story and I shared it here. Um, and where I experienced those things, heard terrible things about me. Um, and then we encourage you to write your story where you're at now. 
So um, that's the, one of the first things that you do here is writing your own story. Um, and that's just a pl- way to be mindful and reflect on where you're at today. Um, and how do you feel? What do you, what is your current chapter? Um, so that's the first part. Um, and I don't know, do, are you a big journaler? Do you enjoy journaling? I do. I do like to write and I, there's yeah. something about writing, um, that for me, I can remember it better, like than typing it yeah. into a note. I just, just, it's not going to remember that I have to do it, but if I write it down, like I can, I can also like not need to reread it, but it, there's, yeah. it's like, it really oh. is like a mind to body to paper. Yeah. I totally agree. Yes. And it's a release almost, um, for me, journaling really helped me. So, um, back in like those high school years, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I just wanted to note that because, right. I think there's something about writing your own story. You could also write a letter to yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, and that just is a very therapeutic, um, experience where you're, you're connecting with yourself, like through written word, which I think is very important. Um, I just wanted to add that as an aside. Um, but the first one is being buried. So this one is where we address the, your belief system because, um, and going back to that quote, they tried to bury us, but they didn't know that we are seeds. Sometimes you feel like you've been buried because of all those negative things that are feeling like they're piling on you. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is where you really want to establish those things are not you. Um, and to take some moments to separate those things from you and what you truly believe about yourself. Um, so you kind of do a T chart. So you're writing like those negative things on one side, getting it all out on paper, because again, like you were saying, there's something about it, right? Just writing it down on paper, um, helps you get out of your head and yeah. it, you know, just more grounded. So you want to write that on one side, on the left side, and then for each one, you're going to address, you know, those and put an empowering truth next to it. Um, I just think this one's so important and that's why it goes first even though it's kind of intense and like, you know, it might be fresh, but, um, I think it's so important to just do this that way. You're kind of clearing it out and you're yeah. able to see it again on paper and not just be in your head. So, yeah, I think that that's so key. Even if you're like talking about it out loud, if you don't like just sit down and like put it, I, I, a tea chart is so, uh, I love, if y'all don't remember those are, but I feel like all of our listeners do, they're all, most of them are before the internet, you know, it's just like drawing a line exactly. <laughs> the tea, and then you put the negative stuff on one side and you list it out and you can really like, it's, can be, it's cathartic. It's very releasing. Yeah. It just gets it out there. And so what do you do on the other side? Oh yeah. So that's where you write like a neutral, something neutral that speaks true to you. And I, so here kind of an example too, is if you're, if someone's saying you're ugly, you put that on the other side, but then when you're writing your neutral empowering truth, you write something that feels good to you. So it does not have to be the opposite. Like it doesn't have to be unbeautiful. If you're not feeling that it can be, um, you know, when I smile, I feel like I have a really good smile or, um, I like to help others. And I, that's a great quality of mine. And I value that, you know, so mm. writing down something that's really true to you in the moment. Um, but that can like, just be a truth that you can hold on to. So, yeah. 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 I also, I like that it doesn't have to be the opposite because, um, our brains don't like dissonance. And so it's yeah. not going to work if you no. write something down that you don't like about yourself. Right. Right. You don't have to go to the opposite extreme either. Um, but yeah, you just want to get to a more neutral space. So you're not living on the other end of the spectrum either. Um, but yes, I think belief is huge. Um, we watched that video yesterday too, where, you know, people who are saying when you hear those things, they're right here. So our goal is, so I am saying it's right. Like by your ear, yeah. so our goal is to, um, get that, just have that separation. So I think this is yeah the one thing I would recommend doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, oh yeah. Were you going to say something? No, go ahead. What's next? What should we do after we do the T-chart? Yeah. Okay. So after the T-chart, you write your bucket list, um, or actually, no, you do a timeline. So if we're picturing a timeline, um, seven years ago, where were you? And then seven years from now, where will you be? And this helps put you again, some distance and then perspective of you've overcome some really hard things in the past seven years ago. Um, and seven years from now, you'll be in a different place and probably yeah. honestly <laughs> kind of working through some hard things again, but that's okay because you're currently, it just helps you see beyond your current circumstances. Um, and also gives you, gives you, um, some like a boost from your past as well saying, you know, yeah. I've gone through hard stuff then. Um, and the reason why I love seven years is because I, every cell of your body changes. 
But also it's not like 10 years where you're like, well, obviously I'm going to be in such a different place. Um, or like, that's too far for me to think about. Seven right. Years. Like a 12 year old thinking about 10 years from now, that's after college. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so hard. <laughs> so hard. But then 19, right. 12 and 19, you're like, okay. I mean, still a significant jump, but it's also like tangible enough to be like, mm-hmm. okay, I'll be in my teens, you know? Um, but exactly. And then, but it's 12 minus seven is five. And that's a huge, but you know, just to see like, okay, I'll, I'll be in a better place. So yeah, I love that one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, timelines can be helpful too. Yeah. I think, um, I do love that that comes in into play. And also I think for any parent, it's like, you know, it's helpful it's like so helpful for them to just get some perspective on their life. Cause you know, part of it's like, Oh my gosh, you're young. Like some of this stuff is just like life. (laughs) Life is just so hard, but also like teaching them how they can, this is a great tool for them to have in their whole life. Cause there's other things that happen besides bullying that you can, you know, this perspective timeline can be helpful for. Yes. I use it all the time when I'm stressed, you know, as a business owner too, you're like five years from now, seven years from now, where, you know, your goal planning too. Um, and you're knowing that the current problem is going to be different, you know, in, in a matter of time. So yeah. it really helps you. I think now that I'm saying these out loud too, I feel like these exercises just really help you get out of your head, you know? Yeah. And that's the thing with bullying. It can really get into your head and, and, um, these exercises help you. Um, yeah, just see it from a clear perspective and yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the next one is habits and, Mm -hmm. um, it's called budding and rising, but it's on habits. And so this is taking into account, what are those things you love to do and making sure you're doing them. When I experienced bullying, I was watching a lot of twilight at the time. I was eating a lot of ice cream, staying in bed, like not going outside, doing the things that I love to do. Um, and that wasn't great for my mental health. And so it's, it's kind of funny. I mean, I think you just need that reminder, like do those things that are good for you and that you love to do when you were little or that, you know, make help you make you feel good. Right. Yeah. Like for example, yesterday of um, Pilates and, you know, I think what I love about that too, is the community. So I think when you're doing a lot of these activities, you can also find a really great community that ends up being you're good friends. Right. And like, even if you're experiencing some bowling at school, like what if you joined like a book club or tennis club or, you know, and then you found friends there. Um, I've heard some great stories of like video games too, even like, um, finding video game meetups or something, you know, if you're, and that, that ended up being a really supportive space. So I just, yeah. you can do. I, I agree. I think have, because as you mentioned, like you were going through bullying and all the decisions you're making, like, of course it's okay to watch twilight. And of course it's okay to eat ice cream, but yeah. like, if you're doing those things as to avoid cope and like, kind of like yeah. they start, to, uh, uh, they start to become the, the way that you're living, it's an avoidance thing. And then you're not even living your life. And so it becomes even harder you right. know, to do the things. So it's like, creating habits around how you want to be and how you want to feel is yes. going to help you feel like you're in control and not let yes. that the bullying be in control. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Focusing on that. So this is kind of, yes, a shift of focus um, and almost, yeah, navigating. Um, I, I, yeah, you said it well. <laughs> <laughs> too much to that. That was great. Yeah. What's, what happens after we do that? Perfect. Um, so after that, you're kind of identifying your purpose um, and how you can choose kindness, even if you're not receiving kindness. So you can choose to give kindness, even if you're not receiving it. And I think there's so many quick ways to activate this. So you don't want to overcomplicate it too here. Um, there can be very quick ways to make someone else feel better, which I think in turn will make you feel better immediately. Um I think one fun thing even to do like right away is to just think about someone you're grateful for and then write a text to them. I feel like, so we've done this actually in, in in-person workshops and we'll take a moment to just pause and get out your phone, write a text to someone that you're grateful for. A lot of them will choose like their moms or, you know, some and their friend and they feel a little awkward doing it, but then at the, they get responses pretty quickly. And they're like, that made my whole day. I'm crying. You know, Sometimes we'll oh. cry and I'm like, it's so sweet, you know, but um, I think sometimes we can forget how we can be such vessels for kindness 
easily, yeah. you know, yeah. but it changes the changes your mood immediately. Um, so it's not only for the receiver of that kindness, but also for you. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think this is a fun one. It's like, how do you activate that kindness? Um, and then I think you do, you can eventually find your purpose through that too, by finding like how your unique strengths lead to maybe, yeah, your, your purpose in life. So, yeah, I, I love that one so much. Cause I, I think it can really teach, I mean, when goodness as an adult, if you're being bullied, like I hope all of these things are helpful, but like, especially yeah. for your kiddos, for the teenagers in your life, like learning how to, um, not just like sit with the bully's voice in your head the whole time and actually knowing like, well, here's what I can do right now. I can actually, I actually am have more power because I can make someone feel really good. And like, and I can do it with a quick text. It doesn't have to be anything I have to buy or do or anything like that. Yeah. I think that's really special. Yeah. Words, words are powerful. And it's, you know, when bullying happens, it's usually, it can be by words, verbal bullying, but um, you can use words for good too. And it mm-hmm. almost it's, it's, yeah, I like how you put that too. Um, but yeah, super easy, super powerful things to do. There's a quote I really liked by, um, Anne Frank too. It's no, like how wonderful it is that no one need wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, yeah, you don't have to wait a single moment and you can start where you're at and start small. Um, yeah, I think that's a really powerful quote too. Okay. So next is being watered. And this is about self-worth um, because, you know, we, it's so important to address your, your sense of self-worth. I think even as adults, you know, I'm learning that we could use boosts in self-worth all the time. Um, but the reality is, and the truth is that just because we're human beings, we are worthy of love and belonging. Brene Brown talks about this really well. And she's just, I think she's so great at reminding us of our self-worth too, but this section, we really want to, um, reinforce that you're worthy just as you are that no, like what other people say, cannot take away your, your worthiness. Um, and so how we build that back up is, uh, writing down 10 reasons to love yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes we time it kind of make it fun. Like, can you list 10 reasons in two minutes. Um, but yeah, I, I remember talking about that with you yesterday and you liked that too. Just like, the I love this. I was thinking about it all day long and I was like, mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, y'all listening to this. Like, just like, think about like say out loud, you know, to say yourself something that you love about yourself. Because I, yeah. again, I think that that's like, what a great place to really, um, deepen and create self-worth and have mm-hmm. awareness around that. I think what mm-hmm. a cool tool. Yes. Yeah. And again, easy and accessible, but I think that's great. We, yeah. And maybe even do a challenge, like do this daily for one week, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and then you'll have 70 reasons, which is beautiful. (laughs) I think that's so cool. That's so cool. Oh my God. I love this challenge. I think it's the next be it challenge. If we do one, it's like, you must post every single day Mm -hmm. on Instagram, what you love about yourself. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Let's make this a trend. Oh my goodness. Yes. I think that'd be great. Um, yeah, because it's so good. And and then you'll have to get creative about it too, right? I think it that can be super powerful. But um, yeah, get creative of like, what are those things? And I think again, this breaks up that negative self-talk that comes from absorbing what other people have said. And I think we just need to break that up as much as we can. We need to put distance as much as we can. And so I love this activity too. And it's actually super popular in our workshops too, because um, it's, I think it can be challenging to start. I think that sometimes we're so scared to do this too, because we're like, we don't want to be perceived as overconfident or, you know, things like that. Yeah. I mean, how many of us listening? Hello, raise your hand. And only one, if you're driving, keep one hand on the wheel. But like, did someone tell you don't brag, right? If you're humble, you know, like, oh, don't say things like that. But people are going to think that you're self-centered. Like, you know, they Mm -hmm. all the, and so all we internalized was like, don't ever say anything good about yourself ever. (laughs) I know. And it's like, yes, I think I I've come to realize too. It's like, if you're not hurting others by doing that, then, then do like brag about yourself, you know, yeah. <laughs> harmful, you know, but I think we, I know because we've heard that so many times we just get, so I, I won't do that, but yeah, I'm working through that too. It's like, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah to love it's, yourself. It's like, exactly. like the, one of the greatest things you could do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And verbal, verbalize it, say it, it's all good. Um, we need more examples, I think of that too. Yeah. And that it's, it gives yourself permission to like, we, yeah. So mm-hmm. cool. Well, I just love that section and I know you do too, but, um, the next one is growing strong. So this one is about being curious and compassionate and cultivating empathy, um, so that you can have a better understanding of what other people are going through to make them, um, be in that place too. Um, so it's, it's kind of like, if you visualize, um, flowers growing, it's like what's underneath, like the roots, like what can you not see, but kind of is affecting the way that this flower, this plant is growing, um, Mm. or like what they're doing. Um, so, and the purpose here is to, is to also shift your focus from yourself and see, you know, what might be going on with them, um, and how you can even be a light to others. Um, and to know that, yeah, there's a lot of things that we just can't see, um, stories that we don't know, um, we start out with writing your story, but sometimes we don't even know the story of like the person who is being a bully. Right. Or, um, yeah. So this is important too. Mm -hmm. I think it's like empathy is like the thing that like we're missing. That's why like, there's like this epidemic of narcissism. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's like, like, because we just are not able to, we're not, I don't think a lot of people are learning empathy uh, Mm -hmm. as they're growing up and like what an incredible way to use a horrible time and in someone's life when they're being bullied to go through the whole process. You have to go through the whole process to get to this part, but then getting to this part and going, you know what, like they're, they're, that person is hurting and and I like, I don't have to bully them back or get mad back. I don't actually have to let that be part of my story and I can still exercise some form of forgiveness yeah. towards that person so I can move on in my life and what, it, and it's really like empowering. I feel like for yeah. these young women who are going through who are learning this, like, because these are steps they can rinse and repeat yeah. if, if anything ever happens to them again. Yes, absolutely. Um, but yeah, so well said again. And I think it's, you kind of release that, um, release it, you know, and you let go and you move forward a lot. Of, so, um, and I know, some students are going into college now. So we've, they've gone through our program years ago and now they're going to college. And like, it's just so cool. I'm, I'm so excited for them to take these principles and apply it there. I mean, hopefully, right. It doesn't happen to them. Like it did for me in so many different schools for some reason, but um, yeah, I think it's so cool that they've like gone through the process. And then now they, if they ever do encounter something like this in college, they can, um, know how to deal with it, but also they've let go of the hurt and like for, you know, in some capacity have forgiven and moved forward, like into their college years. And I just, it's so fun to think about. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So Andy, like I do, I, and uh, like, I'm just thinking about like your journey, like obviously, I mean, like unfortunately kept happening. And, um, I was just interviewing somebody on betrayal and, um, I asked her like, well, if you've gone through betrayal and you've healed, if you did all the steps you talk about to heal from betrayal, like inevitably you're probably going to be betrayed again. Just people, yeah. it just happens. And yeah. it doesn't mean that they're like, you're a magnet for betrayal, but like, yeah. do you heal from it differently? And I'm wondering for you, like, obviously these girls that you, your foundation works with, like they're still going to school. They're still in life. Yeah. Like do, once they've gone through this journal, do they find that like, if they are bullied, it is easier to tell, like to move past from, or like, what what have you, do you have any of this, have any stories like that? Yeah, I think I have heard stories of like going through another transition. That's really difficult. And going back to the journal, like maybe six months later and that it helped them. And now they know they can go to this, um, because it is a rinse and repeat kind of situation. Um, but no, that's a good point. I've, I've heard also, yeah, I mean, it, you can't expect um, to not encounter it again necessarily. Um, and I'm thinking back to this one youth organization. So it's actually, it was the first um, student that I mentored and like went through the eight-week program with. Um, and it did ha- continue to happen after um, like our eight weeks, you know, were done. Um, but she did know like how to cope better, which was yeah. like just so, so I mean, I'm so upset that it kept happening and, you know, that 
in, in school, like sometimes you can't, you leave it to the administrators a little bit, right. In terms of like how much you can do, but I feel good. And I feel, um, yeah, good that she had tools to use on her own. Yeah. 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 I agree. Like it would be so amazing. Like, okay, they've been bullied. It stops. They've done the journal. Like it's over. But the truth is, is like for a lot of people, the bully still might be around. And so they're going through this and having to, Mm -hmm. to keep going through life, knowing that this person is there, but that person's not the truth. And that person's not in control because they, they have self-worth. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, um, I have had, um, adults use our journal too. And like, you know, they're, they go through their own, um, environments with this, right. Like whether that's workplace or, um, yeah. So I, yes, it's transferable. I mean, like, I feel like it's so crazy. I think many workplaces have so many bullies. Like I, I just like when you just, if you just watch the news, like our own, if you're in the States, our own government has bullies in it. Like, it's just yeah. like, you're I mean, that's a bully, you know? And, um, as a, mm-hmm. I'm a Pilates instructor and even in the Pilates industry, like one of my teacher trainers, I was like, this is a fucking bully. <laughs> this is what this is. And unfortunately what ends up happening is like these institutions get bad raps for these bad people, but really like, it's like, we got to call it what it is. That person's a bully. Mm-hmm. And, uh, as the people who are being bullied, we need to do our own healing so that mm-hmm. that bully doesn't have power because the, the yeah, bullying is healing. like, yeah, the bully gets yes. the, their power from bullying and yes. affecting you and silencing yes. you and, and making you cry mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. And if you don't, if you can't, if you're not affected by the bullying, I feel like it, I, maybe I'm correct. Maybe, maybe I'm incorrect. Maybe I'm like living in a, a false world when bullies don't have the same effect that they had on someone, do they leave them to bully someone else or do they become less of a bully? (laughs) Like, how do we prevent them? (laughs) Yeah, no, I know. And it's case by case, right? It's like the, the direction of it differs, but I think what you brought up is good because it's like healing, right? Focusing on your own healing will be such a counter, I think, right? Like where you're not yet so upset or triggered by a bully, but instead you're focusing on your healing and your healing journey, you become stronger, you become more emotionally strong and you become a leader. There are even some like definitions um, of bullying out there where it really does perceive the bully as a leader. And, and even if you look back at like history of um, where like of bullying, they do demonstrate like this person has more power, more wealth or something it, like clearly defines that, which I, I don't, um, sometimes agree with. Um, but I was going to say that I think when you're focusing on your own growth, then that's, that's like, I think winning, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I yeah. agree. Mm-hmm. I agree. It's, um, it could be so hard. You know, a lot of our listeners are parents, um, and you know, maybe they're their this would be their worst nightmare for their child to be bullied or um they're going through it. Can anybody get this journal? Can they uh work with your foundation? What are what are some steps that parents can take if their kids are going through this? Yes, absolutely. Um so yes, you can get the journal on Amazon and I'm so excited about that. Um and then you can reach us at hellobloom.org. There's a contact us form at the bottom and we'd love to get in touch. Um, and teens can sign up for an ambassador program, um, which is nationwide too. So it doesn't matter where you live in the States and, um, follow us on Instagram bloom foundation. We post pretty much daily inspiration there, um, to help you stay motivated, kind of reminding you of these principles too. Um, and we, yeah, we would love to stay in touch with you there. Um, that'd be amazing. Yeah. How can, um, how can people be involved with bloom if they're like passionate about what you're doing? Like maybe they're, they're not someone who is being bullied. They're not someone who is a parent of that. Like if there's someone who's like, Oh my gosh, I just love what you're doing. And I want yeah. to help. Um, per, like I want to help people who've been bullied to prevent bullying. Yeah. Like, is that something that you guys need support with? I love that. Yeah. So I would say if you're a teen, definitely sign up for the teen ambassador program. Um, but we also have a bloom box on our website. So order the box It comes with a lot of goodies too. And, 
Um, we'll be adding a piece of like how to start your own Bloom Club or chapter. Um, so yeah, order a box and kind of represent Bloom, share the good news. Um, we'll also have some campaigns going on um, in May and then October too. October is National Bullying Prevention Month. And so we really want more voices around that time um, to highlight again, bullying prevention, but also this need for bullying recovery and support services too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, One last question. Um, Is there anything we can do that you've seen work to get administrations, schools, Mm -hmm. the local laws, laws in general to understand that bullying is like one of the worst things that is happening in our mental health that we are seeing in schools that is preventable? Like, is there, do we have a congressperson we should be calling? Is there a bill that we should be like saying for like, obviously October, everyone get your like anti-bullying flag out, but like what, what, what steps can we take to kind of get people to understand that this is like a really big deal. It's why, I mean, we've already, the studies are out that like young girls, teenage girls, mental health is the lowest it's ever been since they started like mm-hmm. tracking it. I love your passion. I'm like, yes, where is it? <laughs> Googling already or just like, yeah, I mean, yes, I, so that's a piece of what we want to do too. We want to change legislation because, um, you, in 1999 is when anti-bullying legislation and policies were implemented. Um, that's all the last time. The yes. For, <laughs> for across the board. I know, I know. So Facebook, so far, yeah. everything, that they, all the tools they use. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And anti-bullying. Yes. And we saw, you know, what the, it still almost looks the same too. Um, <laughs> but Yes. You know what? Great question. Let me get back to you though. Yeah, I get back I to us. We'll put it in the show you. notes. Absolutely. Perfect. We'll put it in the Perfect. show notes. Um, we'll, we'll bring it up on a future recap. Uh, yes, absolutely. All right. We're going to take a brief break and get those be it action items from you. All right. Bold, executable, intrinsic, targeted steps people can take to be it till they see it. You've given us some great tips um, with what your steps are through the journal, but what else you got for us? Okay. So I think Number one, writing a letter to yourself. Um, and you can use dearfutureme.org to have it automatically sent to you. And you can choose when you want that sent. Um, and, you know, I don't know if you did this in high school, but um, I just talked to a few uh, students and they who are graduating, going to college, and they started one in ninth grade. Um, and they got one, you know, as they're about to graduate. So, I think we can take that. So write a future letter to yourself, write a letter where you're at now, where you want to be, um, what you hope to accomplish. And I think that ties in all those, like the perspective taking too, that we talked about. So, Oh, I love that. I love that there's a website that will do it because I, I did know. my, the, I wrote a letter to myself. Um, I was a new year's Eve yoga cool. class thing. And I like wrote something to myself about like, you know, um, just a reminder of how I wanted that year to go yeah. and how I wanted to feel. And it came, this is so funny. Actually, I would browse and listen to this. know. It came to me during the week that we were not speaking. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was like, it was like after he dumped me for the second time before we'd been dating. And wow. It, <laughs> That's crazy. Which never makes him sound like a good guy. He's an amazing yeah. person. Um, <laughs> He's great. But it came and it was just like, just remember that you really wanted this year to be about these things. And wow. like, you wanted to feel this way. And so honor those yeah. things. It was like such like... <laughs> I was like, oh, that's yeah. how I want this year to go. This is going to go great. So anyways, uh, yeah. but I, that person just randomly sent it to me. That means she had to go to the post office. She could have lost it. So I love that there's a website that could yes. send it. That's amazing. <laughs> right. I know it is. It's really cool. Um, but that's a funny story. I love that's <laughs> great that. It, I mean, I love that it came to you in the mail too. I think that's special. So oh, if yeah. you can, I mean, partner with someone <laughs> Give them a letter, say like in this time frame, send it to me because at that I like that too. Yeah. Um, old fashioned mail is fun too. Yeah. I love, so it. Cool. I love um, it. Yeah. And I think that really connects you to yourself. Um, and then I do want to reiterate because we love it so much, the 10 reasons to love yourself too. Um, just take the time to do that. I think we should do that, that challenge, the be it challenge for seven days. Come up with 70 reasons to love yourself. And um, don't be afraid to share it too. Maybe share it with someone else today and then encourage them to do it too. Mm, I love that. Mm, I hope yes. you all do. I hope I hope yes. you guys have like you and your buddy sit down at coffee and like yes. before you can even talk about how your day was, you just write down 10 things you love about yourself. Yes. It could really change the whole coffee. And so he, thank you for the work that you do. I hate that you went through the journey that you went through, but I love that there the future 
teenagers of this world have um, have something they can do to support them during this time. And um, y'all, you heard it. You can get the workbook, the journal um, um, on Amazon. We'll make sure those links are in the show notes. You can also go to um, the Bloom Foundation's website to check things out. Um, beating it till you see it is not an easy thing to do, but it's especially hard if you are being attacked um, mm-hmm. yeah, for being yourself and f- when people say things that rarely are true. So I, I really just, I'm, I'm so excited that we've met. Um, I'm so Thank grateful you. for the work that you do. I cannot wait to see how, uh, how bloom grows yeah. and everyone, please share this episode with a friend, um, share it with someone, you know, who might be going through this so that they know there's people out there that can support them. And until next time, be it till you see it. That's all I got for this episode of the be it till you see it podcast. One thing that would help both myself and future listeners is for you to rate the show and leave a review and follow or subscribe for free wherever you listen to your podcast. Also, make sure to introduce yourself over at the Be It Pod on Instagram. I would love to know more about you. Share this episode with whoever you think needs to hear it. Help us and others be it till you see it. Have an awesome day. Be It Till You See It is a production of the Bloom Podcast Network. It's written, filmed, and recorded by your hosts, Leslie Logan and me, Brad Kroll. It is produced and edited by the Epic team at Desenio. Our theme music is by Ali at Apex Production Music and our branding by designer and artist Gianfranco Chofi. Special thanks to Melissa Solomon for creating our visuals and Semena Velazquez for our transcriptions. Also to Angelina Herico for adding all the content to our website and finally to Meredith Crowell for keeping us all on point and on time.